Louis asked me to, to make a comment about, about GMOs, okay? And I'm very passionate about GMOs. We've been passionate about GMOs since the 80s. Way back in the 80s is when we first started making decisions in the SAB and in our supply networks that would make sure that GMOs never entered our product line and they never will enter our product line. We don't allow them. Every ingredient that has genes or a genetic source has got a genetic identity for us. But let me let, understand why we're so concerned about this. Um, in nature's plan, or God's plan, you choose the way you want to, I have trouble separating the two. In the plan, okay, there's a very, very um, direct differentiation of species, okay? Plants are plants, and animals are animals, and microbes are microbes, and never the twain shall meet. Even within plants, plants are different plants. Roses can't mate with camellias, not on purpose, okay? And mice can't mate with rats, and dogs can't mate with cats. And that's there very, very specifically, if you think about it, if that were possible, over time, the whole thing would degenerate into an undifferentiated mass of something. I mean, think about it. What differentiates the importance of genetic differentiation is how we maintain the separation of species, the separation of tissue. If dogs could mate with cats, we'd have dads. <laughs> but think about that. Of course you have to do that. Of course there needs to be differentiation. Of course you can't have a cross-contamination. So what has, in all of their glory, companies like Monsanto done? They have created an abomination. They have violated the separation of species. In the Roundup-resistant soybean, okay, they took the soybean, and then they took a gene from a marigold, and they implanted it into the soybean. The reason is you can spray Roundup on marigolds all day long, and they just thrive. So they thought, wow, you know, if we could get that over here in a, in a soybean, that would be great. People would want to use more of our product called Roundup, wouldn't they? So that's what they did. They put it in there. And then they thought, well, that's good. First generation, that works. So we had these Roundup ready soybeans. And then they thought, you know, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be great if we could own that? If we could own the genetic code of the soybean? I don't know who gave them the right to buy it or what makes them think they have the right to own it. It's ours, okay? Every living person on the planet owns the genetic code of the soybean, not Monsanto or any other company. Okay, so now, what they said is, wow, if we could get this thing to do certain things for us, if, if, if we could make it so that the soybean that's produced is infertile, so that the farmer couldn't grow his own seed, they'd have to come to us and buy the seed. So they took a gene from a mouse, oops, a gene from a mouse, an infertile mouse, and implanted it in the soybean and created this frankenbean, right? This thing that is not really a soybean. It's not really a soybean. A soybean, the genetic sequencing of a soybean is very clearly defined. This is not that. And your genetic identity is your identity. Therefore, it is not a soybean. It shouldn't even be allowed to call it a soybean. Really, because it's not. And then they thought, well, we need to find a way that we can control this to make sure that the farmers we contract with are using our soybean. So they took a gene from a bacterium and implanted it in the soybean. And in the presence of a certain test that they do out in the field, that bacterium will fluoresce, it will give a color, so they can tell in the field, while they're growing the beans, if those beans are in fact grown with their, their patented soybean stuff. Now, you get it? I mean, do you understand what they did? They took the basis of all of creation, the separation of species, and they violated that 
and they're not the only ones doing it. It's happening all over the place. You've heard of the super salmon that they're trying to get out there, right? Where they took the, the genes of a flounder and put it into a salmon. The reason is flounders grow twice as big, twice as fast. They eat twice as much, too. Well, wouldn't that be nice? If I can get a salmon from a salmon egg to marketplace in eight months instead of 28 months, how much money can I make? Holy smoke, holy cow, roll up the bank bolt. The problem is, what do you suppose would happen if this creature ever got out into the environment where the other salmon are, where the wild salmon are? In just a few generations, they would eat up all of the natural salmon food supply and completely drive them into extinction. And then we'd have these salmon that aren't salmon, flounder that aren't flounder things out there. Okay. So, um, you know, this genetically modified thing, we go to great lengths to make sure that everything that we put in our product has a genetic identity. We establish a genetic identity. For the carrots and carotenoid complex, it has a genetic identity. We know and specify the seed stock that the carrots are grown from, and we demand that the fields that our carrots are, that these carrots are grown, grow only this genetic seed stock. And along the way, we check the genes all the way up the line. And when you look at that little number, the batch code on the side of that bottle of carotenoid complex or salmon oil plus or whatever product is out there, recognize that unlike the vast, vast, vast majority of companies, we can take that number and track it all the way back down the supply line, all the way back to the seeds it was grown from in the fields where it was grown. Because that's really the only way you can be in control of this thing. Now you saw that thing Jim put up there, 94% of all the soybeans grown in the United States are genetically modified. Key phrase there is in the United States, okay? A lot of the rest of the world has said no. Not maybe, not, they just point blank said no, you don't get to do this. Now the food industry's finding tricky ways around it. They say, okay, we won't feed it to people, we'll feed it to the cattle that the people are gonna eat. Yeah. So it's just, it's just a bad, bad, bad 